You will remember that while representatives to the Second Continental Congress met and signed the Declaration of Independence, George Washington was far away from Philadelphia. He was sent north to Boston to fight the British. His was a very difficult job. Washington's army was made up mostly of farmers with no military experience at all. They had no uniforms and only old guns called muskets, which they hardly knew how to fire. There weren't enough guns, and there was hardly any gunpowder. The wording of the Declaration of Independence was approved on July fourth, seventeen seventy-six. Five days later, messengers carrying copies of the Declaration reached New York, where General Washington's army was camped. His army heard the words and rallied in support of independence. A statue of King George was melted down into bullets for the Continental Army. The men soon realized that they would never have enough bullets for the fight ahead. Later that summer, British warships were spotted entering New York's harbor. King George had gotten help from the Germans as well. Germans are people who are from Germany, another country on the continent of Europe. More than thirty thousand trained troops arrived to fight the unprepared colonial militia men. George Washington nearly lost his army in the fierce fighting around New York and New Jersey that fall. The redcoats chased the Continental Army south across the Delaware River, thinking that they had scared them off. The redcoats left only a small force to guard them on the other side of the river. It was December, and they felt sure that nobody would fight during the dead of winter. But they were wrong. George Washington came up with a daring plan. Daring means courageous. On Christmas night, he gathered his men together. It was snowing and cold, but Washington had the men get into their boats and row quietly across the ice-filled river. More than two thousand soldiers crossed the river. The crossings took several hours. Marching through the wind and sleet of the December cold, the Continental Army reached the British troops just before dawn. While the redcoats were still sleeping, Washington's men launched a surprise attack on the enemy camp. The redcoats were surprised. All right, some of them came out of their bunks in their underwear and just held up their hands. It was a total victory for George Washington. Nobody in his army had been killed. Washington and his army returned to Philadelphia to shouts of joy. But the war wasn't over yet. The Continental Congress knew that they needed more help in order to win their war for independence. German soldiers were fighting alongside the British. Perhaps the French would send soldiers across the ocean to help the colonists fight against the British. It was no secret that the French and British had long been enemies. The French are people who are from France, another country on the continent of Europe. The Continental Congress decided to send some men to France to ask for their support. Their chief representative was seventy-year-old Benjamin Franklin. The French did not like to lose in battle, and they were still angry about losing to the British in an earlier war. At first, they did not want to support the colonists. It was crazy to think that an army of farmers could defeat one of the greatest armies in the world, the British Army. If you defeat someone, you win. But an American victory in New York in the fall of 1777 changed their opinion overnight. They promised gunpowder, soldiers, and ships. General Washington's army was camped in Pennsylvania at a place called Valley Forge during the winter of 1777 and 1778. Snow lay on the ground when Washington and his men arrived. They pitched tents and built log cabins, but neither kept out the cold. The men were dressed in rags, and many of them had no shoes. Walking barefoot in the snow, there was hardly any food, and some days the men had little to eat and drink other than bread and water. Disease spread through the camp, and many men died. The men missed their families and wanted to go home. Washington struggled to keep up his men's spirits. 
Washington worked very hard to keep his men from quitting. He camped in a tent beside them for a time, earning their respect. No battles were fought at Valley Forge that winter, but the cold and hungry men spent hours training to be ready when they met the British again in the spring.